Hey, today's practice is on opening the hips. Uh, so you'll want to have with you a block, a blanket, a yoga strap, maybe a dog or two, and let's get started. Go ahead and uh, lie down. You can place something underneath the back of your head. And then draw the right knee into your chest. Keep the left knee bent, right knee into your chest, and then slightly out to the right. And then bring it back to center. Good, and then slightly out to the right again. So you wanna move slow and methodically so you can actually feel what's happening in the hip socket. And you might even key into what's happening in the SI joint, the lower back. We'll do that one more time. Slowly moving out to the right and then back. Place the right foot on the floor and we'll swap sides. So right arm is out to the side. Left knee comes in out to the left and back. Good, out to the left and then back in. Going slow, taking your time to allow the work of the intentional movement to be to register you know in our bodies and then back through center we'll pull both knees into your chest and from here what i'd like to do is a supine figure four so you can use a yoga strap around the back of the left leg or you can interlace your hands and we'll be here for about 10 breaths and then we're going to intensify it the way to intensify it in the supine figure four, very gentle, is just drawing the right knee away from you slightly. And the moment you do that, you can feel, oh, there's even more sensation. And as long as the sensation feels like it's in the zone of healthy release, then we're, we're in good shape. <laughs> so five more breaths. Relaxing the sides of the neck, relaxing the collarbones, and then we'll plant left foot on the floor. Just go ahead and extend the right heel to the ceiling. You can have your hands at the back of the right hamstring. We'll only be here for a few breaths. This is just to kind of give the hammies a chance to release before we go back in to stretch the lateral rotators. And then, now we're going to cross that right knee over the left knee and draw your legs towards you. So you can lift your head and shoulders off of the floor to grab hold of your feet. And then walk your heels and outer feet away from you and slightly down towards the floor. So you're getting this chance to release through that outer hip. It's so good, so healthy. It's a way to... Say thank you, you know, deep gratitude for what our bodies can do. Keep opening through the collarbone. Notice that in this pose, the structure of it might invite a rounding in the shoulders. But when we're aware of that, we actively work to release it. It can feel really nice. We'll take two more breaths here. And then when you finish that breath, we're going to place the left foot on the floor. If you have a yoga strap in your body, I know we do somewhere. <laughs> ah, there you are. This time we're going to take the yoga strap around the sole of the right foot and extend it up to the ceiling. Now you can take your left leg and lengthen it long down the mat if that feels good. If you do that and your low back is saying, wait a minute, sister, too much too soon, then bend that left knee. So it's up to you. If the left leg is long, extend the left arm up overhead, and that's a way to begin to stretch open through the psoas. And we'll take two more breaths here. And now take the left hand down, right leg moves towards the right, but keep the right hip and right glute glued to the floor. So we don't want to tip over. I mean, you can tip all the way over to the right. That's a totally different pose. You really want to maintain the stability. 
of the left hip on the floor. And we'll take three more breaths here. This is to open those inner adductors. Letting yourself just drop into this moment. And then bend the right knee, extend both legs long down the mat. Will you give yourself one breath here just to feel how the right leg might feel closer to the earth, the right leg might feel longer than the left. And then let's go give that left leg a little love. So we'll start with bending both knees. We'll for supine figure four on the left side, left leg uh, moves towards you. Interlace your hands around the back of the right leg. Go ahead and, you know, you can gently nudge that left knee open. And then see what you can do about dropping shoulders slightly away from ears and away from one another. So the shoulders open. Now you can close your eyes and breathe. So the yogis believed in Pratyahara, uh, turning our senses inward towards wisdom. And it's interesting, it's quieter in more ways than, you know, might appear at first blush when we turn inward. One more breath here. And exhale, plant that right foot on the floor, left heel to the ceiling, just interlace your hands around the back of that hamstring. Just five breath here. There's new research coming out about how when we move our eyes, like from side to side or up or down, it produces a little swoosh sound in the ears, which is fascinating. But if you're thinking about quieting your mind, less stimulation is less. So closing your eyes when you're doing um, supine poses might actually feel, okay, go ahead and take that left knee on top of the right and then draw your legs towards you. So it's Gomukhasana on your back, lifting up and taking hold of your feet. That doesn't mean, you know, take a peek at what I'm doing, absolutely. But then seeing, once you get the pose, seeing if you can settle your eyes to close. If it doesn't feel right, keep them open. Just knowing that that's an option to deepen the quietude within. And this is good news as, you know, you may be heading into a busier time of the year and wanting to find a little more quiet, simply sitting with your eyes closed can provide that to some extent. Now draw your feet away from one another and slightly towards your armpits. And we'll breathe here. Relaxing through your jaw. Get breath big. And we'll take two more here. And then when you finish that breath, we'll place the right foot on the floor, yoga strap around the left foot, sole of the left foot, up to the ceiling, Supta Pandustasana, numero uno, number one. Press the heel up and then relax your shoulders. And then go ahead and you can extend that right leg long if you like and lift the right arm up and over, last five breath here. So one way to open our hips is through the back of the leg release. Just like the eyes connected to the ears, our legs are connected to our hips, our low back. Then you can take that right arm down and open the left leg to the left. Just a few breaths here. 
You might feel this in the calf of your left leg. Keep the right leg glued to the floor. Good and breathing. Three more. Nice. Last one. Inhale. Good. And exhale. We'll draw that left leg in. Both knees in. Apanasana. Sway side to side. And then we'll tip over to one side. And you can move the blanket off of the mat. Coming into tabletop. And then we'll roll it up into downward facing dog. Get some movement. Uh, some weight bearing poses this for today's practice that are again intended for hip opening. We'll take a big breath here. Exhale the breath out, bend your knees, come up to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold. Bend knees, come all the way up to standing. Reach tall, interlace your hands, shoot the heels of them upward. And then I'll exhale, forward fold. So we're just going to move through one vinyasa. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come to a high plank. Take it to low, elbows are in. Upward dog or cobra. And downward facing dog. Exhale. Float the right leg back towards the wall behind you. Bend that right knee. So notice the shape. This is similar to what we did on our backs. This is a Opening up now, we're getting into the fascia along the ribs and the right side of the body, lateral only, lateral out, outer embankment. And then bring that right knee into the outside of the right elbow. We'll take a big breath here. And then float that right leg back and up again. Good, and here we go. Bring the right foot in between your hands. Left knee drops to the floor. Inhale, both arms up to the ceiling, breath in. Stay here as you press the pelvis forward so the hips move forward and you can take your hands down alongside you or keep your arms elevated. When your arms are above your head, you're going to get more of a aerobic or cardiac, cardio output. One more breath. Exhale, both hands down on the inside of the right foot. Walk the right foot out to the right a little bit and scoot your left knee back any amount. And then pull the chest forward. So hands are on blocks or the floor. And you're going to draw the chest forward. Sometimes we do this pose and we're all the way down, like onto our forms. But for right now, we're going to reach forward, hands down. Two more breath here. And then walk the right foot in. We'll roll over the left toes. Coming into a low lunge, long spine. Press down through the right heel and float your arms up to a crescent lunge. So bend into that left knee. That's going to give you a little more opening through the left hip flexor. And then you can re-straighten it if you like. We'll take three more breath here. Last one. Inhale. And exhale, both hands are down. Come to a high plank, low plank. Inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, downward facing dog. Full breath in. Exhale the breath out. Press through the base of the knuckles. Push the hips back. One more breath. And then float the left leg back behind you. Bend the left knee so you're opening up to the side body. Full breath in. And exhale, float your shoulders over your wrists. Left knee, left elbow, breathe. And then send that left leg back up. Three-legged dog. Coming forward again, this time left foot on the outside of the left hand. Drop the right knee, walking that left foot to the left. It's going to give you a little more space in the right knee back. Hands on blocks or on the floor. And then you're pulling. Think about pulling your upper spine, your upper thoracic spine forward through as if it's moving through the sternum. So you get this beautiful opportunity to use your own bones to release the stress in your body. 
This is about hips, but hips and shoulders are cousins. <laughs> They're really connected. So we nod to both when we're working on focusing on one or the other. Good, one more big breath here. Keep dropping the right side of the pelvis forward. And exhale, we'll walk that left foot in, roll over your right toes, hands on either side, each side of your left foot. So low lunge, pressing to the ball of the right foot. Nice and sturdy through that left heel and then float your arms out. Good, crescent lunge. Breathing here. And then hands come back down to the floor. We're gonna drop the right knee back to the floor and lift both arms up to the ceiling, which is how we started on the other side. So we're just mixing it up, but giving your body the same chance to release. Two more breath here. Good, and then hands are down. We'll roll over your back toes, step to the top of the mat. Come on up for Gomukhasana, standing. So again, it's a lateral uh, opener for the right hip. So the right foot comes up and over. Good, right arm is under. And then sit a little lower, lift your arms up and breathe here. Find a drishti. So here you really do want your eyes open. Certainly more challenging if you close them. For three. Good, lift up, two, good. And one, both hands down, both feet down, up, inhale, reach to the ceiling. And then we'll swap, let's just go to the other side. Left knee across, left arm under, right on top. So you wanna sink your hips straight down, but put weight into the heel of the right foot. Yes, three. Woo, two. <laughs> And one, really nicely done, both hands down, both arms up to the ceiling, step to the short part of the mat, and a forward fold, exhale. Inhale, halfway lift, keep a nice long spine. Exhale, high point and low. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Full breath in. Exhale, the breath all out. Step your right foot forward, warrior one, inhale, lift up. And then open, warrior two, as you exhale. Feel your hips opening here in your warrior two. Reverse the warrior up and back. And then take the right forearm on the back, uh, the, right, the back of the right forearm onto the top of the right thigh. Left hand is down, spin open so that the left ribs look up towards the ceiling, but then drop them down. So we're not gonna bow up, we're gonna drop down. Good, press through the top of that left thigh, float the left arm up and over. Breathing here, spinning, ribs stay with it. Two more big breaths, relaxing into the stretch. And then come up through standing. Turn now so your toes point to the corner of the mat facing you. So not back, but forward. Bend into your knees and hands are on your thighs. Close to your knees. Drop that left shoulder down towards the right knee with the right knee bent. Press into the left arm so the left arm is straight. Right elbow is bent, keep moving there, really stretching open through the inner adductor and groins. Three more breath. And then up through standing, breathe, inhale, and then exhale, go back down into the same stretch, right uh, drop your right shoulder towards your left knee. Right elbow is straight. Left elbow bends. 
Give you a little leverage point. Stay with it. Notice if your heat is increasing, your internal body heat may be increasing to meet this stretch. This is a beautiful release. Lift the tailbone slightly, tip yourself forward slightly, and breathe here for three. And then up through standing, nicely down. We'll step to the short part of the mat. Inhale, both arms reach to the ceiling. Get tall, unlock that tension, release it, and then forward fold, exhale. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step it back, high plank. Take it to low, inhale, lift the heart. Upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. One breath in. One breath out. One more time. Inhale. And then exhale. Left foot, warrior one. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, open, warrior two. Good breathing here. Feeling the lengthening of your pinky fingers away from you. Reverse the warrior. And then we'll come directly into Parsva on this side. So dropping in to the stretch, pressing back through the right thigh, spinning the left pinky finger. So it's facing the floor. Actually, your palm is facing behind you. Pinky finger is facing towards the floor. And three, two, and one, come on up through standing. This time, turn your toes in to face one another. Hands on your frontal hip bones. Pitch yourself forward, Prasarita Padottanasana. Hands move way back behind you, so your fingertips are reaching towards the wall behind you as the top of your head presses down, looks down towards the floor, and then you're pressing to the outer part of each foot. Two more breaths. and then hands reach forward. We're going to pivot now, facing short part of the mat. Step to a high plank, lower down, low plank, upward dog breath, and downward facing dog breath out. Right leg back up to the ceiling. Bend the right knee, and here we go into a pigeon. So you can take any variation of pigeon that you prefer. You could do the pigeon that we did earlier on our backs. And we're here for a few moments. We've already worked with the lateral rotator today, but this is another way just to give it another layer of letting go after the standing poses. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale, place your hands down. You can put them on the floor or right hand on the block. Bend the left knee and take hold of the top of the left foot or shin with your left hand. If you put a block under your right hand, it gives you a little more lift. So choose what works for you. Flexing the toes for three, two, and release. Nicely down, we'll roll over the Left toes now, sending it back, downward facing dog. Left leg floats up, bend into the left knee, and bring yourself forward into pigeon on this side. Stay connected to your breath. If the dogs are barking or the wind is blowing, Three more breath here. So 
And then hands come down to where your elbows were. You're going to keep the left hand on the floor or block. Bend the right knee and opening up through the right quad. Taking hold of the right foot or shin with your right hand. You can turn to the right if you like. It's not really a twist necessarily. One more breath. And then release. Coming back, rolling over the right toes, downward facing dog. Big breath in. And exhale, letting the breath go. Come onto our knees now. And we'll just take a mini Shavasana. Of course, you can rest as long as you are able to. But even just a one minute relaxation. Knees can be bent. You can do any spinal, spinal twists if that feels right for you. 